Hey, YouTube. What do you guys know? I got a, another another one of my 4-2 games here against Efren from... Wait, wait, let me guess. No, I don't... It's not Philippines. I don't know. Is it Ecuador? No, I don't think so. Philippines. I was right the first time. We should uh, should begin uh, recognizing this because of Wesley So, although I guess the, his name's going to have the American flag by it now, which is pretty exciting. All right, so it looks like this is maybe like a Queen's Indian defense that he's just... Uh, that he's, that he's working himself into here. Uh, I'm going to treat it sort of like a Nimzo. Though I'm, I'm going to be okay if he if he captures here. All right, so but he chooses not to. Um, and I think that I'll probably put the, the bishop on e2 now. Since he didn't take the opportunity to double my pawns, uh, I'm, I've now removed that as a possibility from him. Interesting. Um, yeah, I'll trade. And then, and then what? Do I want to take again? Hmm. I don't really want to. I sort of want to keep some pieces on the board. But uh, I also don't want double pawns. And, and I also don't want to play queen c2, knight takes, queen takes. And then now, uh, now he would open. So I don't really want to do that. Um, I also don't want to just shy away from it either. I guess I could play this. Aha, I have managed to <laughs> avert all problems that I had with uh, my options there. I don't even know. I don't know if that's a great move or not, but it develops uh, and it uh, maintains. Okay, so as planned, I will take with the with the rook. And maybe now I can try to play e4, and uh, I'm already prepared to swing swing my rook over. So I'm going to develop my bishop. I might even put it back on b1. Okay. Interesting. So f5, I see this a lot whenever in the structure, especially when they are supporting a knight, but he's not supporting a knight, and this one's got a long ways to get there, because the knight moving diagonally like that is uh, the slowest way a knight can move. So I'll just castle. I'm already down like a minute on time, which I guess I should just begin accepting that that's how my life is going to be. Um, so yeah, I was talking about putting the bishop there anyway, so he just encouraged me to do so. Um, I'm going to continue. Let's put this knight here. That looks like a nice square, right? Yeah. I want to play e4 so that I, I can make use of my rook that I have, uh, that I have so nicely hosted here. Yeah, I kind of figured that he would do that. I guess maybe it wasn't such a hot move to... To play that because I don't have any other any other useful squares. I could go back to to here try to trade off his knight, but I don't want to do that because I'm I'm sort of dreaming of a king side attack, and this is a king side piece, and this is a queen side piece. So it makes sense if I'm wanting to attack over here to to leave those pieces the way they are. So um, maybe queen e2 is next on the agenda. I think there's a good chance that that is next on my agenda. And it's nice because since he's played f5, oh, okay. Huh. Interesting. I don't really like that. I don't want to take it um, because he's going to end up with, like, a really nice clamp. So after bishop takes, pawn takes, if I play, like, down to d2... Then he plays d5, and if I take it, he takes back here, and he's established a nice bind. Instead, I think I want to play a3, and if he goes back to c6, then I want to play d5. I like that better, I think. E5 might also be an idea, because that pretty well guarantees the opening of the C file, which my rook is somewhat nicely posted on. Okay, so let's continue with this plan, my central expansion. This may end up opening the C file as well. Good, because he has that backwards pawn on... on uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, he has a backwards pawn on c7. 
I sort of like this. Okay, so now what happens? Is he going to go, I guess he wants to go into B3. Should I take on E6? No, I don't, well, but if he advances past, then I don't like that either. I think I should, I think I should take and let's go here, hit the queen. I have to be a little bit careful because, oh, he threatened his checkmate. That's nice and annoying. Not really what I had dreamed was going to happen here. I guess I can fix that though. I just trade bishops, right? Yeah, he doesn't have a choice. He has to. But my idea now is to play b4, and it's going to send his knight back to b7, and then I get a check. On, oh, I don't have that check because the knight's in the way. But I'm going to do it anyway. So maybe the knight was bad enough on the square it was on, and I didn't need to do that. So let's go attack. Yeah. We're going to attack c7, and I have another threat of... Okay, that's a, that was actually a good move. Well, um, let's attack c6 then. <laughs> One good turn deserves another, right? Okay, but uh, I can just take it. It's going to be the same, the same problem before. Yeah, he missed that. So this is good for me. I win even more than, uh, well, I win the exchange and a pawn. This should be enough. <clears throat> okay. Um, now the knight isn't so good on c3 because it can't go to d3. So maybe I'll put it back on c2, or maybe play rook d1. I haven't decided. Whoa, not rook d1. Keep in mind, Jonathan, that uh, maybe I should force a queen trade. Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna force a queen trade because he has a lot of pressure on f2. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take all that away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, he's offered me another pawn. I like pawns. And that one frees me a whole bunch. So I'm going to take that opportunity. Yeah, he, he, he bought me out of the, the queen trade idea. I'm, I'm, I'm often guilty of seeking queen trades, even just to, to, to make the position cleaner, even if I uh, don't think it really benefits me. But now uh, I think the queen trade is even better than it was before. Isn't it? <laughs> I get he was hoping that he would be able to take and, and win the rook there with the with the pen. So I'm gonna go after I'm gonna go after that pawn. Let's expand. How should we do that? What's the best way? Let's go here. And if he tries to play Okay, and so now here I'm just taking a bunch of space. <clears throat> His knight was really has some issues with what square it would like to go to. Um, must make move. Defend. Ah, I need to start playing much, much more quickly. He's almost committed himself to taking now. Trading a rook should be good for me. He agrees. So let's defend that pawn. I'm going to go ahead and just remove my king up. Or no, advance the pawn. Since he's going to let me do that. Uh, let's try to take it, and I'm also hitting that pawn here. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab that. He gets that pawn, though, if he wants it, but uh, he probably should not take it. Continue to advance. Watch out for fork squares. It's always a good, uh, good plan to watch out for any forks. Luckily, he does not have any. <clears throat> okay, so we're just going to play b7 soon, very soon, perhaps right now. Though, hmm, he's sort of holding for a minute. Uh, I guess I'm going to send my king over here to win that pawn. The pawn endgame should be pretty ridiculously good for me. 
Okay. Let's see what he does here. So that hold, it's all pinned. And now we take, 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 push. I am faster, much faster. And this is an easy win now. He should probably, well, he's not gonna, but I'm say he should have resigned, I think. I wonder if that was okay there. I was a little bit concerned about that trade. I didn't really have a chance to calculate the pawn inning, but I just assumed it was good. Is he gonna let the clock just run out? Well, that's not very nice. Efren, you are a mean guy if you're going to make me wait 40 seconds for my win. <laughs> uh, it's his time. He can do what he wants with it. So, do, 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 do. So anyway, anybody know a good joke? Um, I don't. I think I'm going to go watch the, the, the last of the Hobbit movies this evening, so that should be fun. I guess I can start, uh, we can start looking at the position. It'll automatically jump to the front if, uh, if he makes a move. So we got this position. Yep. We got a bunch of trades. I'm actually kind of happy with this rook maneuver because I think it, it held a lot of things together in a way that I wanted to wanted the position to do. Okay, and he uh, he did just let the time run out. Not a nice guy. <clears throat> anyway, so then we. I'm not sure how I feel about this f5 move. It really clamped down on e4, which as I stated, I really want to do. If I can get e4 in. Especially if those guys get traded. This rook's ready to swing over. I get a touch against h7. So I, I think I should really try for, for e4. Um, I wasn't offended by this. Yeah, I think that this uh, knight e5 idea was probably crummy. Um, perhaps. I probably should have just played queen e2. And, uh, and just continued player preparing for e4. If I play queen e2, can how does he stop me from playing e4? Uh, oh, he does what he did. He puts the he puts the old queen on it. The difference this time, we'd end up in almost the same position, except for he wouldn't have a pawn on d6. Which I don't know if that's good for me. Maybe, maybe an idea to prevent uh, his his bishop e4 plan would be to play a3, and then assuming most likely the knight's going to go back to uh, to c6, and then I play d5. And if he trades here, um, then this pawn is not supported so much anymore, so it might undertake some problems. And, uh, and then he also keeps his bishop out of the e4 square. Instead, we got this. And then... Uh, yeah, so he, he dropped this here and didn't realize that. And after this, the game is pretty straightforward. So anyhow, hope you enjoyed. See you guys later. Thanks a lot. Bye.